Now let us try to see how to achieve SOA. Few ways of achieving SOA before Microsoft .NET 3.0 were MSMQ, Microsoft Message Queuing, Named Pipes, .NET Remoting and Web Services. These were the few famous or you can say popular ways of achieving SOA, Service Oriented Architecture. Now let us uh, have a brief understanding about each and every approach. MSMQ, what it is named pipe, what are named pipes and .NET remoting, what, why do we need .NET remoting, web services, uh, what are web services and why do we need web services. Let us try to have a brief understanding about these things. So in short, message queuing, MSMQ, it works on fire and forget concept. That means whatever the messages I want, I put them in the queue. The client put the messages in the queue and the service whenever it wakes up it will take it so let us see that msmq so microsoft message queuing is a technology for asynchronous messaging whenever there is need for two or more application or processes to send messages to each other without having to immediately know the results so we go for MSMQ. It is something like fire and fun. So I push a message, I start doing my work. I need not to wait for the reply. So MSMQ can communicate between remote machines even over internet. So I can have, so it is again service oriented architecture. It's free and comes with windows, but it is not installed by default. You need to install it. And all the functionalities of MSMQ is exposed via system.messaging namespace. Say, uh, this is my client and this is my server. Server is sleeping, server need not to be active. Now what I do, I push the messages in the queue. Now whenever the server wakes up, it starts reading from the queue and dequeue the messages and client need not to be active at that time. Now one, one real time example that I would like to give about MSMQ is, uh, whenever a user register on my portal, I need to send an email. So I need to send a text or that text is nothing but an email. So I need not to wait for the response. I just push them on the queue, MSMQ, and I start doing my work. If there are hundreds of users registering at the same time, so hundreds of mails will be in the queue. So server will take one mail after the other and it sends to the respective email addresses so this is msmq this concept is msmq in short one way communication and text message exchange that's it now what are named pipes named pipes are same text message communication but this is two way communication named pipes are sections of shared memory used by separate process to communicate with one another the application that creates a pipe is the pipe server and the process that connects to the pipe server is a client. So again, it will have server and client. One application is exchanging frequent short messages with another located on the same machine or within the same LAN. You can use named pipe. App module dot named pipe assembly contains the base class for pipe connection. That means all the classes and the methods for this named pipe implementation is available in this assembly. So again here you will have a client and the server so here you can see that we have two-way communication both of them should be active client and server should be active we'll send a message and it will wait unless and until it receives a response again this is for text messaging that's it now uh, later on we saw a need for object and classes and i want to you know, exchange objects. I want to pass objects. I, I don't want to pass a text message. I want to pass an object. So we thought of that and we started working with remoting. So remoting provides a way for application in different machines or domains to communicate with each other. Remoting provides a powerful yet an easy way to communicate with objects in different app domains. So two different applications with two different objects, or you can say one application can create an object of another application's class. Any object which executes outside the app domain can be considered as remote. App, app domain in the sense, in my application or in my solution. 
whatever I have, that object is not available here. It will be available on the server side. So same SOA concept. But uh, one point is uh, .NET remoting requires the client to be built using .NET or any other framework that supports .NET. So as we have developed the server or the service remoting service in .NET, my client should also be in .NET. So it means homogeneous environment, both the sides, client and server should be in .NET. So remoting functionalities, it is very famous. It is exposed via system.runtime.remoting. So its concept is something like this. So you have a client and you have a server. So server, it has an object. I have created an object in the server and which interacts with the database. So this object, you can say this class. When I add this service in my client so with the help of remoting services on both the side, I get a proxy object. That means even though this object is not available here, it looks like it is available. So from here I can create the object of this class and I can call the methods. This in turn will call these methods. This is how they communicate. So client stub, server stub. So I'm, I'm not going to you know dig into the details of .NET remoting, but this is the concept. So in .NET remoting, in short, we exchange objects. And even though the object or the class is not available on the client, it looks like it is available. That means a proxy class, we call it as proxy class. I can create object of that class as if it is available on the client when I add this remoting service. And both the sites, they should have .NET. But uh, we then we saw a need for a .NET application or a Java application interacting with .NET application or a PHP application interacting with a .NET application. That means I don't want client to be a .NET client. I want my client to be of any kind. So we saw a need for that. Then we thought of web services. So web services works on XML concept. So we started exchanging data in the form of XML over HTTP. A web service is a unit of managed code that can be remotely invoked using HTTP. That is, it can be activated using HTTP request. ASP.NET Web Services provides the highest level of interoperability. That is what we, we want, interoperability. Full support for WSDL and SOA over HTTP. WSDL stands for Web Service Description Language and SOAP stands for Simple Object Access Protocol. So these two are XML files. So as of now, let us uh, understand that or let us as, uh, you know, have a simple understanding. WSDL and SOAP are XML files. So WSDL gives the description about the service and SOAP are the messages that we push over the network. For example, .NET application can talk to Java web service and vice versa. ASP.NET web services do not have to know anything about the platform, object model or programming languages used to build them. So they need not to know anything about the service. The service themselves do not have to know anything about the client that are sending them the message. So both of them, they need not to know about each other. Just what they need to know, the SOAP message that they are getting. So they pass the SOAP message. They take it, whatever the result they have, they again send it via SOAP message. So SOAP messages are nothing but XML messages. Now, web services functionality is exposed through system.web.services. So it is again simple that you have client and you have a server, same object. Now I use XML document to share the information or to add the service. So that is nothing but WSDL. I add the service reference and I get again a proxy class over here. Then I start communicating with the service with the help of XML SOAP message. Hope you might have understood uh, WSDL and SOAP. SOAP is, is nothing but messages that I pass. WSDL gives the description about the service. What are the method, what message I need to pass. So that information is available in WSDL and the message that I pass is SOAP. So I pass SOAP message and in turn I get SOAP message. So again, at the client side you have serialization, deserialization, at the server side you have serialization, deserialization and all those uh, details we are not going to dig into that. Let us have an understanding of web service. 
my client can be anything it can be java client it can be a php client or it can also be a dot net client so that's fine so whatever the scenario we have we were using msmq or named pipes in some scenarios we were using dot net remoting and in some scenarios we are using web services now what is the problem what is the issue with this let us see the problem problem with this is you need to master msmq name pipes remoting and web services technologies to select the right approach for a particular distributed application requirement that means you need to understand different different namespaces and you need to remember different different classes and methods and the process to implement your distributed application or service oriented architecture in different different approaches so this is the issue now what is the solution for this let us see the solution in our next video thank you very much